Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, my house colleagues, colleagues from the Senate, um, members of the press. Uh, today, I filed House Bill 627, uh, expansion of health care in the state of Missouri. Um, we're pretty excited about this. We've talked a lot about job creation in this state. The speakers talked a lot about job creation in this state. Obviously, everyone knows Medicaid expansion is probably the biggest issue facing the legislature this year. Um, as I said today, I filed House Bill 627, which is an expansion of Medicare. This will create 24,000 jobs. We all know the numbers, but I'm going to go through them anyway. 24,000 jobs in the state of Missouri, $8.2 billion in federal investment, $9.6 billion in additional investments to the state of Missouri, as many as up to 300,000 Missourians that would have access to health care for the first time. Fewer uninsured Missourians need to be receiving uncompensated care in emergency rooms across the state and hospitals across the state. This will strengthen our hospitals, especially those in the rural areas. If we do not pass this expansion, if we do not work to create these jobs, we not only will fail to create 24,000 jobs, we will lose up to 5,000 jobs in the state. It is not just expansion, it is job retention. $4 billion in lost federal reimbursements for uncompensated care. $1 billion in a hidden tax that Missouri hospitals will have to pass on to insurance carriers to make up for the uncompensated costs of emergency room visits. Almost $2 billion in lost investments that Missouri hospitals have put into the state. If we do not pass this, some of our larger hospitals will still be able to carry on, but it's our rural hospitals that are going to close. It is our rural hospitals that will be hurt the most and it's something that we simply cannot do. With that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Representative Jeannie Kirk, or I'm sorry, to Mr. Kerry Noble, who is the CEO of Pemscott Memorial Health Systems in Haytide, Missouri. I want to thank him for being here, and uh, if we can hold questions till the end, then we'll go through. Thank you, thank you, Representative Noble. Uh, as you said, I'm Kerry Noble, Chief Executive Officer with Pemscott Memorial Health Systems in Haytide, Missouri. And uh, we're located in Pemscott County. As most of you probably know the demographics of Pemscott County, but we are the most economically depressed uh, area in the state of Missouri. In fact, we were even noted in, in a national publication as one of the top 50 poorest counties in the country. We at the Pemscott Memorial, uh, we have been providing uh, quality health care to our residents since 1949. The, uh, Burden of uncompensated care is growing uh, for our region of the state, not only just for us, but for uh, rural, rural hospitals throughout the state uh, that we're in communication with. We are all desperately in need of the passage of this health care reform. It is mandated by the Affordable Passage of the Affordable uh, Care Act from 2009. What's going to happen if, if the state of Missouri does not participate in this expansion, we will lose access to federal uh, money that we currently receive uh, in payment for our level of uncompensated care. For us in particular, that means over $7 million over the next seven year period. And what that means also is, is that we are the largest, uh, actually the second largest employer in our region. We employ 550 people, annual payrolls in excess of $20 million. In addition to our acute care hospital, we operate a 52-bed inpatient behavioral health unit. We operate eight Medicare, Medicaid certified rural health clinics and, and 160-bed uh, skilled intermediate care long-term care facilities. We also operate the only emergency ambulance services in the county. Without our facilities, uh, we are a safety net hospital. Over 30% of our population 
lives below the federal poverty income guideline. When, when they earn an income of, of $16,000 per year, uh, family incomes are, are less than $25,000 per year, uh, you can imagine what that means. And it's not just the fact that in, individuals aren't working, they are working, but they are working for small employers that do not offer health insurance coverage, uh, the cost of health care is beyond their reach because of their incomes. This health care expansion will offer those individuals the opportunity to acquire much needed health care insurance. We as a health care provider, we're a public hospital. We take care of, of everyone who presents to us for care regardless of their ability to pay. But 14% of our utilization is in uncompensated care. And we cannot continue to, to subsidize this uh, long term. Uh, what, we, what, what will happen is, is that we will jeopardize <coughs> our facility. We will no longer be in existence if this passage of this expansion does not occur. And I think also what needs to be emphasized is, is that other states that are going forward with this expansion will be receiving taxpayer money from Missouri. And so why not retain that, that tax money locally so we can make sure that our residents, our taxpayers, are deserving of, of uh, receiving the benefit of the money that we've worked hard to earn and, and, and pay in taxes. So I hope that uh, you, you will help to support uh, this, this effort. Uh, job preservation is, is critical. Job expansion in Missouri is critical. In a rural area that we are, it's very lim limited opportunity to bring in new industry, but without a viable local hospital, the, the opportunity to bring in new employment in our area will be virtually nil. I can, I can assure you of that. And so again, I think uh, on behalf of not just Tim Scott Memorial, but other rural, rural hospitals in our state, this is a critical uh, piece of legislation. And I, I commend Reverend Hummel and, and the Democratic Caucus for their effort in moving forward with the introduction of this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, Representative Kirkton, who is our ranking member on the House Budget Committee, uh, has some statements that she'd like to make. Good afternoon. I think we all remember on opening day of session when Speaker Jones uh, announced his triple E plan that was uh, education, energy, and economic development. And knowing that the majority of new jobs comes from existing businesses, we have a golden opportunity here to grow Missouri's economy by accepting these federal dollars to extend health care to more hardworking, uninsured Missourians. The additional 24,000 jobs that are anticipated in 2014 alone would impact every sector of our economy, whether it's hospitals, doctors, nurses, retail, all the way down to the local florist, and the list goes on and on. Bringing our federal tax dollars home is expected to decrease the rate of uninsured in Missouri in different regions of the state anywhere from 26 to 31%. It would reduce, as Representative Hummel mentioned, the $1 billion price tag that's going to be put on our <coughs> health insurance premiums if we don't expand health care in Missouri. More access to care, less medical debt, and lower mortality is not only a public good, it's good for our economy. And the hospitals, let's talk about them. They are the anchors of our communities. Whether it's disaster preparedness or, heaven forbid, a state emergency, we need our hospitals to be strong and ready to step in. Without expansion, reductions in dish payments, Medicare cuts, and sequestration cuts will weaken our hospitals and probably even force some of them to close. And that's going to stifle our economic growth. In recent years, many of our state-run acute psychiatric care facilities have lost beds or shut down because of budget cuts. The burden placed on our hospital emergency rooms is very well documented. There are not enough acute psych facilities as it is. If more facilities close, the impact on prisons, law enforcement, public safety, our courts, 
and those suffering with mental illness will be costly and catastrophic. And I've heard from members on both sides of the aisle, we need more mental health care. Accepting the federal dollars to expand health care in Missouri is our chance to put our words into action. Let's not waste it. Good afternoon, I'm Representative Yelma McCann-Mady um, from the 26th District out of Kansas City, and I'm also the Assistant Minority Floor Leader. Healthcare expansion simply makes sense for Missouri. It makes economic sense for Missouri. Almost 24,000 new jobs is going to bring additional revenue to our state. And as many as 300,000 more Missourians will then have access to care. Failure to do this expansion will result in the loss of jobs as well as the possibility that we're going to lose some of our rural hospitals. In short, healthcare expansion is good for our entire state. Uh, we have just one more speaker. Reverend, um, Reverend John Bennett with Missouri Faith Voices is here, and he'd like to make a statement also. Reverend. Thank you. I speak on behalf of Missouri Faith Voices, a statewide network of uh, faith-based organizations uh, advocating for social justice. We enthusiastically endorse this health care expansion effort of Representative Hummel. We have consistently declared that health care expansion is a moral imperative rooted in the prophetic call to justice, informed and challenged by this truth. We believe that expanding health coverage for 260 to 300,000 additional hardworking but low-income Missourians is the morally right thing to do. Expanding health care will have a transforming impact on over 100,000 uninsured children because expanding health coverage to cover parents makes it more likely they will receive needed health care. Full disclosure here, my eight-year-old grandson, who is autistic and bipolar and a special child of God, has recently returned from two weeks of therapy at Edgewood Children's Center in St. Louis, Missouri. His world-class therapeutic care there by that Edgewood staff was covered by Mo HealthNet. And I rejoice in the way his tender, fragile life has been touched by loving care. My rejoicing, however, is tempered by the knowledge that there are hundreds, even thousands, of other children who desperately need that kind of care. Health care expansion would bring healing to their lives. It is a moral imperative. Medicaid uh, health care expansion will save lives. Families USA did a study in June of 2012 which indicated that nine Missourians die each week for want of <coughs> health care coverage. That is a moral abomination. The clergy and faith community of this state believe that this bill and other similar efforts is absolutely necessary in order to more faithfully serve the God of justice. Thank you.